Hi, today we'll be coding a one element spinner. You can already see the one element right there and we're going to maximize the CSS because we won't be writing anything else. We're going to start with a base radius and this is going to be 5 m. So we can tweak this later. And on our loading element, we're going to set the padding to that radius. And we're going to set a dummy background just so that you can see stuff. And of course, here, we don't want this to stretch across. So the way we fix this, if you've seen my previous videos, is on the parent, which is the body in this case, we set display grid. And on the element itself, we set place self center. So let's do just that on the body. Uh, display grid and here, place self center. And next step, we have a square with the edge twice that base radius and turn this into a disk. So border radius 50%. Okay, now here we're going to have a gradient. So let's say, and we're going to use that list of colors, but we don't actually want a radial gradient there. Uh, we want a conic one, except we don't have autocomplete for that. And let's also add two more stops. So uh, transparent, and of course, something like that and um, let's align stuff nicely and we're going to want to have sharp transitions there so here we're going to have something like a progress p let's say it falls back on point one times 100 percent okay and um, we're going to take oops we're going to take that and here we're going to have a sharp transition and then something pretty similar, except we're going to have a different progress. And let's say this is going to go up to 0.8, something like that. Okay, and here we're going to have another sharp transition, 0%. Okay. Now we're going to want to animate those progress values P and Q. And we're going to do that, but first we need to register them. So property P. First off, we have syntax, and this is basically the type. So, number, initial value is going to be a zero, and if I could type, that would be great. Okay, uh, next step, inherits, and we're going to set it to true, and you're going to see in just a moment why. Um, then we're going to take this and copy paste it, and you can see that when I register this, that point 0.1 doesn't matter anymore because the value went to zero. And when I change this to the Q, that Q is going to go to zero. So our slice is going to have a width of zero. Okay, if I change this to, let's say, 0.7, it looks a bit different. Okay, next step is animate these. So we're going to set keyframes. So keyframe speed. Um, so yeah, it goes to the value of one. And we're going to take this, copy paste it. And again, we're going to replace P with Q. And here we're going to have animation. So something pretty basic, um, infinite. And um, we're going to have animation name, P and Q. And of course, we're going to want to change this back to zero. So they're both going to start to zero. We're, we're going to have a slice that increases and then decreases back to zero again. Um, but in order for them not to increase and decrease at the same time, we need two different timing functions. So animation timing function is in, is out. So the first one, the P is going to ease in, is going to increase slowly at first. And the second one is going to increase fast at first and then slowly at the end. Okay, and now we can change this back to zero and we're going to have that nice effect. Okay, but what if you want this to go around the circle more than once before it goes back to nothing? Well, we can't go 
with the conic gradient beyond 100%, but we can add a transform here. So transform, rotate, and here we can have a progress P times one turn. Okay, so this should do it. So you can see the first time it passes through there, it doesn't go back to nothing. It's uh, okay. We can actually have more there. So something like three turns. Okay, let's go back to that uh, one turn. Um, let's increase this a bit, something like this. And we don't actually want a slice of a pie. Uh, we want uh, a part of a ring. So we're going to cut out the inner part and we're going to do that with a mask. So let's say this is actually going to be a radial gradient from transparent. And I use red here because it only has three characters, but anything that has an alpha of one is good. So only the alpha channel counts for the mask. So here, uh, we're actually going to want to use closest side. Again, a keyword for which we don't have autocomplete. Okay, and we're going to want to have a width of that uh, or thickness of that uh, ring. So basically the distance from the outer edge to the inner edge of the ring. So that distance is going to be something like this, let's say. Okay, so here we're going to have calc 100% minus that distance. So, oh, sorry. So here we're going to have a zero but I don't really like that we have a jagged edge there, so let, let's make it slower so you can see it better. So you can see that inner edge there is jagged and I don't like that, so let's uh, fix that. And we're going to fix it by adding one pixel there. So like this. Okay, now it's smooth and uh, we can uh, Go back to that animation and let's say we're going to have a gradient there so this one is going to be the first volume right and here we're going to have the second color right so something like that all right but let's also have rounded ends and we're going to add those using two pseudo elements so a before and an after so we're going to have before and um, after. And we're going to want to have a display grid on div elements as well, right? And we're going to want these two to overlap in the cell at the intersection between the first row and first column. So that's going to be grid area, first row, first column, and um, content. So it's going to look something like this. And we're going to set their padding to half that distance. So that's going to be like a small radius. So small radius is going to be half that distance. So set the padding to that. Uh, set a dummy background. And of course, we won't be seeing anything because of the mask. So let's just... Um, Set that to um, okay. Let's comment this for now. So now you can see those uh, pseudo elements. Let's also set border radius fifty percent on them. Okay, and then let's also set a transform rotate and we're going to have calc and we're going to have an angular progress 
which falls back on P and we multiply this with one turn, all right? And then we translate this and at first we wanted to go from the center to 12 o'clock. So that's along the y-axis, translate y, in the negative direction with a minus. So translate y minus that base radius. And now you can see it. And we can just uh, uncomment that. And of course, this is only going to work in Chromium browsers because we're animating custom properties, but future proof. Okay, so something like that. And now for the after pseudo element, that angular progress, we're going to set it to Q. Okay, and here we can do something, like use that first color, right? And then we can take it right here and use the second color, right? So this is looking like something, but I don't really like how that gradient looks when the arc is uh, small. Let's, uh, so we're just going to go back to black. So everything, let's just uh, undo. Oh, not that. Uh, let's also undo the black from there. So like that. So everything. Okay, and now we're just going to get that color from the pseudo elements of the body. Now, because of that, we're going to take this and um, on div and on all pseudo elements, we're going to take this So we're going to set that right there. So the pseudo elements of the body and the div, they all overlap, they all get stacked. So now on the body, we're going to have before and after. And of course, they're not going to show up without setting content on them. Uh, let's make the before visible. So something, something like this. And now for the after, we're going to use a linear gradient. We're going to use that list of colors. Okay, and let's set place self uh, center. We're going to use padding uh, that base radius plus the small radius. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, uh, let's say it's going to be at 45 degrees or something like that. Or at minus 45 degrees. Okay, so it's going to look like that. And here we're going to use mix blend mode, lighten. And this basically does it. A few more pretty fine tweaks. So here we're going to make the viewport full height, um, the body full viewport height. Okay, now uh, let's get rid of that uh, scroll bar, margin zero. And we can set nicer timing functions. So for example, something like this. So for the ease in, um, So something like this and something very similar for the other one, except here we're going to replace this uh, with one. Okay, so it looks something like this. Uh, and I'm just going to leave it at this. I'm not going to tweak it any further. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you like it, 
if you like the work that I'm putting out since early 2012 and you want me to be able to do more in the future, please consider supporting it. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon. The link is going to be in the description. Or you can get me something off my Amazon wishlist. Again, the links are going to be in the description. Or you can at least share this to show the world what can be done with CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching and until next time. Bye!